Today I've been paid by Sega to prove my abilities at creating a successful school and crushing my opponents in the field of intellectual battles. In the last video we managed to mentally disintegrate Dan by softlocking the entire game for him, and today we must finish the job on the two final challenges, with my final finishing act hopefully ending my relationship with the Drift King known as RT Game. Now of course allow me to explain why all good evil tycoons should be running a university. University students are the perfect workforce, because unlike minimum wage interns, students don't need to be paid. And best of all, they'll even pay you for education. But as we discovered, it turns out the students will continue to pay provided they're happy, regardless of the amount of education they receive. So why bother building a center of learning when instead you can build a money siphoning student trap? So that brings us to our first challenge of the day. So without further ado ladies and gentlemen, Lawrence Cheney is back to tell us what our glorious challenge is. Very simply, we have to build the happiest university possible. The only goal is happiness, because after all... If you're happy, have you ever truly failed? Yep, that's right. It doesn't matter if all of our students fail the course, it's just about making sure that they have fun. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Okay, so this is our third map that we're going to be working on. It's the Pizza Lanatra map, and effectively this map has been played by Call Me Kevin, played by Anna Chess, and now it's on to me. And immediately I'm noticing that whilst this campus is quite a high level and the average student happiness is already relatively okay, there are more staff members than students, which is is uh, probably going to be economically devastating. But hey, we're gonna give it a go anyway. So we're going to load into the map, and I've got a really interesting idea. I'm going to be using a culmination of our last two challenges and my glorious British exploiting experience to see if it's possible to build a money-making university without any of the whole education thing. And it's looking like we need it because uh, we're forecast to lose 471,000 this year because we're almost spending 1 million on staff wages. What? Why have we got so many staff members? Why have we got 20 janitors? What are they even doing? Oh god, we gotta fix this. Okay, well, the map is looking relatively nice. We've got a really nice garden going on here, this beautiful peace symbol, a whole sleepy nap time club area, giant quantities of toilets, and what can only be described as uh, a bedroom of nightmare. Now what I will do is I will actually manage our university course, and our goal here is to have as many students as possible, because we want to make as much money as possible. So we're going to add in a general knowledge course and a school of thought class as well because these guys make the most money. And then we'll round it off with a glorious money wangling course for all of those lovely poshos. Actually can we just add more? Oh this is a great idea. Fine we're just gonna add in as many courses as possible and it doesn't matter that we're not going to actually have the teachers able to teach those courses because who cares? It's my university. Anyway we're gonna crank up all of our lovely student intakes to as high as they can but we're also going to ramp up the tuition fees to as high as they can go as well. My goal is to have the most expensive university to go to, but you're not going to actually even get an education. Right, so next year we're on track to make 1.2 million from tuition fees, which is a lot better than uh, the 400,000 we're currently making. So I'm going to confirm and this is our brand new setup for next year. Of course, we fail a huge amount of campus requirements. We don't have enough computer labs, enough teachers, enough actual locations for training, and the solution to that is we're going to get rid of all of the existing ones. That's right, this is going to be an education-free university. Goodbye private teaching rooms, goodbye computer labs, goodbye noisy music areas, and nerdy lecture halls. We do not need any of them where we're going. They're simply going to get in the way of my greater happiness, and so they must be purged from existence. Our one goal is to make sure that our students are as happy as possible for as long as possible. Their lack of education and pass rate just simply doesn't matter. All we need to do is keep them happy, paying students. And if we can manage that, we're gonna be in the money. Right, already we're off to a cracking start, and I'm going to actually expand the glory student union just to increase our access to happiness. Bam. Oh, lovely. Now more people can fit in here. Now, of course, in order to maximize happiness further, we're going to need a student lounge. This is like a nice hangout area for our students. We can add in some lovely table football tables just all the way along here, just to really maximize the glory of this student lounge. Alright, there we go. One student lounge complete. That's going to massively help 
help out our students and make them happy. They also want a live music event which we can set up, just something nice and simple because it will increase our happiness for 30 days and that's really all that matters. Wow my goodness, throughout the entire year we're going to just be having endless student union parties. That is actually fantastic. Well this is definitely going to make the entire university full of happiness and joy, so brilliant. Right, fantastic. We're all booked in for the happiest times of our university's life. Now we just need to open the campus up to students, though I think I do need to do something about the staff. Okay, we no longer need teachers. Teachers are entirely redundant because, well, there's no one to teach. They're simply going to get in the way of the greater happiness of my students. All right, anyway, let's start the next year off with a bang. Wabam, a whole bunch of new students coming into the school and money is going to be printed. Anyway, all of our new students are arriving for the next year and already they're looking pretty damn happy. It's the average student happiness number which we're the most interested in and currently we rested a nice chillaxed 63. But that will improve as we have our first few parties of the month. Now of course there's lots of negative exclamation marks above people's heads being like, yo hang on a second, where's my room? And of course to answer those questions the answer is, uh, it doesn't exist anymore, we got rid of it. So you no longer have to worry about those things. Instead just chill out in a nice relaxed student union party and completely forget about the fact that you're meant to be getting educated. If you stay happy enough, you'll continue to pay tuition fees. And would you look at that, our first month's profit is in. Despite the fact that we're losing 61 grand a month on useless staff wages, we're actually still somehow managing to scrape on by. Oh, look at this, this is going great. We've got a student union party in full swing here. Everyone just vibing away on the dance floor, having a grand old time. Already our average student happiness is up to 70% and fluctuating into the 71% mark, so this is going very well. And several people failed to complete assignments, but honestly, who cares? It's all about that campus happiness, as we're noticing the academic results of our students fall into the 34% category. Now, I'm noticing the student union room is actually only able to take nine people at a time, so logically by extending it just really, really far, we can just really increase the capacity of that student lounge. There we go, right up to 15. And average student happiness, it's up to 72%. Now, several people, you know, they're getting giant things above their head saying failed to complete assignment, but um, no, who cares? Who cares that you failed to complete an assignment? You're here for a good time, not a long time. All right, we're doing fantastic. We're still making about 65 grand profit a month and we're halfway through the year and no one in our entire university has been educated once, yet they are happy. They're not even refusing to pay tuition fees. They are still going to university. Just imagine signing up for a university saying, yeah, I'll pay several grand of tuition fees. And yet, even though you haven't been educated on a single thing, you're still going. This man here, Ozzy Bungle, his course fees are 15 grand and he's clocked up seven grand of student debt. This boy has done nothing. He's attended zero classes, but by God, he's doing great. Oh my God, just look at the requests we're now getting. We're getting quite a few requests for just literally anything and everything. Uh, Students want a coffee kiosk. Juliet Dobson, you bastard. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the end of our first year in control and we've got 1.1 million in the bank. Look at this, year five is over. Overview, um, 22 students graduated, eight are some have, uh, for some reason continuing and 68 failed. I don't know how 22 students even graduated when we provided no education for the entire year, but we maintained a 31% pass rate. And what awards did we get? We got campus of the year, queen of clubs, and king of hearts. Wow, we got the most social campus, the best club campus, and campus of the year. And I mean, as you can see just by the giant quantity of students who failed, um, at least they leave knowing that whilst they failed, they did so feeling very happy about themselves. All right, I think we're looking good and ready for the next year. So well, bam, let us begin a new year as a foot. Year six of our mighty university's glorious life. Now ready the first few parties of the year are underway, which is getting our university off to a cracking start. The first big celebration just happened in here, and that's going to give everyone a party buzz, leading to 20% boosted happiness, all thanks to that glorious student lounge party. Right, I've now also decided to destroy the giant shower block that existed and build a new smaller shower over here whilst expanding the giant student lounge, because this way we can maximize our happiness area. We also do need just a few general, like, carpets on the floor just to increase the general prestige and vibe of the space 
is, as if the space has a good vibe, then generally students are going to be happier. There we go. Look at that glorious environmental positivity we have. Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've made some adaptions. So we're into our third year of running this school, and of course, everyone is actually really quite happy. We're averaging a decent amount of happiness, although it has just gone down because, well, uh, pretty much the entire student body failed and has just been ejected. However, it turns out the game has a contingency plan in space. For just these scenarios where you manage to trick a whole bunch of people into doing a university course that doesn't actually exist. If 10% of our students next year don't pass, our campus fails. So in order to balance it out, I've decided to revolutionize our build whilst maintaining peak efficiency and securing us the most happy campus of all. What I've done is I've lowered all of the tuition fees to all of our courses to zero in order to maximize the amount of students we have coming in and maximize their happiness. At the same time, we're also going to run two classes, general knowledge and archaeology. The archaeology students, despite not paying any tuition fees, will make us a huge amount of money. Meanwhile, everyone else will no longer have to pay any tuition fees. So now we just need to set our school up and make it ready for the archaeology students to arrive. In our case, that means I'm going to be buying all of these empty plots over here as we're going to be using them and converting them into the greatest dig site the world has ever seen. Right, well, bam, and we've just built all of this lovely new area. This is now all part of our school. And so we're going to build ourselves the necessary dig site. And there we go, perfect. We've built an absolutely gigantic dig site, which is going to be ready and raring to go to make us copious amounts of money. So without further ado, I think it's time that we start the next year with the happiest student population the world has ever seen. So we're bam, we're straight into the next year. And whilst most of the student body gets to just goof off and party, a critical quantity are going to be here generating us copious amounts of money by stealing up buried and lost glorious artifacts from a bygone era which we can now claim to be our own. Anyway, fantastic. Our first few archaeologists have arrived on the dig site and are getting to work doing their little excavations, lowering the ground level and, of course, actually passing their lovely tests. Anyway, it doesn't even matter if any of the archaeology students pass their course because the general study students definitely will and the general study students are more than enough in order to actually get us into the next year. Okay, average student happiness, 93%. It is doing really, really good. We can just take a look at the happiness graph here. Everyone is positively vibing. Why are you upset? What's wrong? Oh, you have a medical issue. So that's why you're sad. You also want a coffee kiosk. Well, you know what? You're not maximum happiness. You're ill and you're not making us any money. So get expelled, my friend. Be gone. You were crumping my vibe, okay? Be gone, crumper. My goodness. I don't even think anyone else in the challenge is going to get close to this level of student happiness and yet somehow still be making money. This is just the unopposed god tier strategy of money making and student satisfaction. Right, it's the end of year seven and well, we've got some great answers. 33% of the year passed. That's right. It's glorious. The general studies students all graduated. It's a glorious success. And we got student choice awards for the most popular campus, campus of the year award and queen of clubs, baby. So what if 56 of our students failed? We got campus of the year and student choice. Student choice when all of these people must now depressingly hold their heads in shame and explain why they've racked up so much debt going to a university that didn't even educate them. Now, many of you will be saying, but Spiff, look, you started this year with more than 1 million in the bank and you've only just got 1 million. Oh, what a shame. Well, no, we haven't. For we can sell this for 600,000 and wabam, that year was a giant profit. And of course, we can now just immediately whack down Dig Site 4 again and get it ready for the next year. But I think it's safe to say that we've built the greatest campus the world has ever seen. Our students are happier than anyone has ever personally perceived true happiness in their own lives. We're the Students' Choice Award, we're everyone's choice award because we are the greatest campus in the known universe and we make copious amounts of money and we make copious amounts of people happy. We've perfectly balanced this challenge, so I think we pass this one on to RT Game and then move into the final challenge. The ultimate challenge. The money spending challenge. Okay, and now it is time for our final challenge, which very simply outlined is all about spending as much money as possible. We must bankrupt ourselves and make sure that the school completely runs out of money. So the problem with our final challenge is that we have to spend everything and we have to spend it as fast as possible. And as our final challenge is Dan's starting map, we're kind of buggered for the sole reason that Dan decided to start in sandbox mode, meaning we have to somehow spend $117 million. This is completely impossible, but life finds a way. And seeing as I also not only want to spend all this money, but mentally disintegrate Dan, it's time for me to create the 
largest nightmare the world has ever seen. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the thing that devours all, the Bone Zone. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my glorious creation, the Bone Zone. Uh, it is made up of uh, a lot of hedges and walls and uh, kind of just nightmare combinations of structures because we have walls within walls on top of walls at angles the walls should not be able to go. I mean, just who knows what on earth is going on here. I've created a monstrosity, but it is my beautiful monstrosity. The Bone Zone is looking glorious, although there is one irredeemable issue. We have 129 million in the bank and we need a way of spending it. But luckily, I found a way. You see, over here in the finance section is the ability to pay staff members. As you can see, we can pay all staff a 1% pay increase. This is fantastic and it takes the salaries of our staff up and up and up. So as we can see, our janitors are now requesting over a million in wages. So logically, if we just hire a few more staff members, preferably ones with relatively large salaries, we'll be in a fantastic situation whereby we can pay them copious quantities of money. So let us simply just give them an absolutely gigantic pay rise, which will in turn bankrupt the entire university as fast as possible. So all we need to do is start our next year and then immediately we should actually go into gigantic crippling financial debt. And also we're going to have a whole bunch of very, very confused students that aren't able to leave the campus, some of whom are just simply clipped into the terrain of the map and are never going to be able to leave. But hey, who cares, Rakulu Floob? You're being paid 7.9 million to be sandwiched in a wall. Still, at the end of August, we're going to see our very first balance sheet reporting, and it doesn't seem like the game has quite processed just how much money we're going to be spending on staff wages this coming month. It believes we're actually going to turn a profit at the end of this month, which um, I can put good money on not happening. Oh, there we go. First month, we gain a loss of minus 24 million. This is an incredibly good sign. But I'm wondering how far can we take it? I wonder if we can cause an integer overflow by just simply offering too much money to all of our staff members. Perhaps if we were to pay the janitors in the form of billions, then what could possibly go wrong? Now we are into the negative pay rise. Yes, this is it. We did it. Janitor's salary next year is going to be minus two billion. Now, this could cause some something very interesting. When we move into the next month, it's entirely possible that we're paying our janitors so much money, they're actually going to start paying us. There's only one way to gloriously find out, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to do it together. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The end of September draws upon us. This could be it. Yes, it worked! <laughs> Oh god, I've done it. <laughs> I've only gone and done it. Integer overflow gods, eat your bloody heart out. If it works in Skyrim, it works in every damn game. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We were given the challenge to spend all of our money, and I truly tried my best to spend everything, but it turns out if you just try and spend slightly too hard, you eventually cause an absolute integer overflow error and end up with 3.8 billion. Ah, it's perfectly balanced as all things should be. <laughs> oh my god. I really want to get to the end of the year, just just to actually see what happens, because it is going to completely and utterly decimate all of the wonderful financial graphs that we have going on here. I mean, look at those staff wages, negative 3.6 billion on staff wages. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> what is this? Laura Rucker, janitor, is considering quitting. Their top complaint is salaries. What can they possibly be upset about in their salary? Oh, yeah, that's true, they are it really quite negative pay satisfaction considering they have to pay for everything. Okay, I wonder if I can free them and then build the best staff room ever and that should hopefully keep them all happy and allow me to continue farming money off my glorious staff members. Alright, this is it. I think I've built the uh, most successful and greatest staff room the universe has ever seen. It is going to be absolutely glorious and make our staff incredibly happy. So wabam, all of the staff in they go into the staff room. This should hopefully make all of our staff feel extra happy. And so regardless of the fact that these staff members are actually having to give us all of their salary and in fact pay us to be staff members, they're going to become so satisfied by this glorious staff room, they're going to happily pay us two billion. There go another year, another billion dollars in profit. Glorious stuff indeed. Well, bam, the new improved staff room can now fit 68 staff members. Lovely. This is fantastic. And we'll guarantee that our staff members will no longer be dropping out because no, there is no need. In 
Instead, they will be permanently hanging out inside of the best room the universe has ever seen. The greatest staff room. So who cares if you have to pay two billion just to work here? You're going to love it. But hey, we're up to 22 billion. This is a very nice sign indeed. I think this is probably by far the most money anyone has ever had in this game. Oh dear, look at this poor student over here trapped. You're leaving the campus because you dropped out. Well, um, you're not doing a very good job of leaving the campus. I think you might be here forever. I mean, I can't even expel you because you've already expelled yourself. But hey, that's fine. You're just gonna stay here. What could possibly go wrong? Now, of course, more students are failing to complete assignments, but that's okay because the teachers are having a grand old time vibing in the greatest room in the universe, complete with sunflowers and entertainment consoles. Oh, it's just the grandest of all spaces. We even have nice little tea tables to relax at. Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's glorious. And we're bam, only three more months to go until we get to see the gigagraph. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in the final month. We have $37 billion now in our bank accounts. We have become the richest university entity in the entire known universe. I have ascended into godhood, ladies and gentlemen, and become a true power to be reckoned with. And soon it is time to see the ultimate end of year graph and bask in my own glorious prowess and skill. For I am a god in this universe and there is no game that I cannot destroy. So what if I'm being sponsored to play this game? I love every game I play and I break everything I love. Okay, now let us take a look at the graphs because um, we made money. We made money that year. <laughs> We made so much money, the game physically can't even process it and has spewed out minus 13 billion. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. We've, we've broken this and I love it. Well, it's been a fantastic few weeks, but I think, of course, all good things must come to an end. And so that means I'm going to load up a save of this and give it to RT Game, as I just want to see what his opinions are of my glorious university. Just to really Really get a nice gauge of his feelings. Now, off the bat, I noticed that he's got 35 billion dollars, but his students are very unhappy. So I'm not entirely sure what's happened here, but let's have a look. <laughs> what did you do, Smith? What happened to the campus? How did he make 35 billion? I can't even read the numbers. How did you do this, Smith? Yeah, we can check the financial history. Hang on. No, he he made a loss of negative 13. Billion. He's done an integer overflow, I think. Spiff, no, not again. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the Spiffing Brit and I've absolutely enjoyed my time in Two Point Campus. If you want to check out the game, it is now released. Personally, I've had an absolutely glorious time with it and I know that when this video releases, the developers will not have fixed the exploit because it is simply part of the game's design to allow you to pay staff members an increased salary. However, there is nothing stopping you from paying your staff members so much money it overflows the game's integers and sets them all to be negatives. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the Spiffing Brit your destroyer and your creator. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a like and sign up to be an intern today because in my glorious university, you will be paying me the money. Anyway, farewell, ladies and gentlemen. A glorious thank you to each and every one of our amazing Patreons and YouTube channel members and I will see each and every one of you majestic sausages in the next one.